BOHS Occupational Hazards of Brick Kiln Workers 12 year old Sachin works long hours in India's brick industry and it is making him sick He is one of many children who spend their youth toiling long hours each day making bricks by hand Instead of going to school kneading the brick mixture with his tiny hands and feet Sachin works in thigh deep mounds of water mud clay straw ash and coal dust exposure to contaminated water and mud causes many serious illness severe worm infestations and skin infections he presents himself to a primary care physician with dizziness severe back and limb pain with a chronic cough the busy doctor after a brief history taking and examination prescribed some cough syrups and analgesics only if he had asked this brick kiln working boy one simple question what exactly is the nature of your work the doctor would have arrived at an accurate cause of his complaints which were probably related to his job and work environment effective history taking has long been identified as a core discipline in treating patients spending more time compiling a good patient history has been known to provide the most benefit as compared to long physical examinations and expensive laboratory tests collecting an incomplete history can affect initial therapy and all subsequent decisions for treatment therefore it is essential that primary care physicians ensure that neither the patient nor the health system is unduly burdened by deficient history taking primary care providers and family physicians can play an important role in improving the recognition of occupational disease preventing progressive illness and disability in their own patients and contributing to the protection of other workers similarly exposed this role can be maximized if physicians raise their level of suspicion for workplace disease develop skills in taking occupational histories and also learn basics of advising prevention india is the second largest producer of bricks in the world after china Around 1 and 1/2 lakh units across the country produce about 250 billion bricks per year. The Indian brick industry is currently based on decentralized production activity using energy intensive, resource depleting and highly polluting technologies and production methods. 25 million tons of coal are consumed leading to air pollution through carbon dioxide carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide nitrogen oxides and suspended particulate matter the air pollution and generated bottom ash cause considerable health problems especially respiratory the brick making industry employs around 10 million or more people and a third of which could possibly be children extreme working conditions and poor remunerations contribute to the deterioration of the quality of life of these migrant workers usually from the poorer districts of uttar pradesh chatisgarh and odisha distribution of workforce brick kiln workers fall broadly into four categories contract laborers who are not on the payrolls of the kiln owner migrant laborers who migrate towards the major brick production clusters every season women workers employed in brick kilns in large numbers entire families work in brick kilns resulting in large number of child laborers a few bonded laborers work in some brick kilns characteristics of work whatever be the activity following are the characteristics of work 1 
Clay dust contains a mixture of inorganic compounds including free silica, iron oxide, lime, magnesium carbonate, alkalis, calcium carbonate, calcium sulfate, sodium chloride and varying amounts of organic materials while burning of biomass fuels increase the exposure to gases including sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide and particulate air pollutants. 2. Brickfield workers perform several types of strenuous activity such as 1. Cutting the mud with a spade 2. Carrying the mud 3. Preparation of clay 4. Carrying the clay 5. Moulding 6. Stacking that is loading and unloading the bricks 7. Carrying the bricks that is green and burn bricks and 8. Burning the bricks in kiln 3. Exposure to poisonous gases is a primary health hazard and may lead to an unspecified number of deaths. 4. Injuries and mishaps due to lack of protective gear or preventive measures taken in the production of bricks. 5. Exposure to dust gives rise to chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases and other respiratory illnesses. Published studies demonstrate that inhalation of dust and suspended particles emitted by brick kilns matters could not only affect lung functions and lead to increased cardiovascular diseases. 6. A variety of musculoskeletal disorders and discomforts are seen among these brick kiln workers involving in the firing, mixing and moulding processes. Workers, especially women, have to lift heavy loads. 7. They are exposed to sun for long hours during the moulding process. 8. High proportion of very young and old workers put both these categories at health risk. 9. Undernourishment combined with long working hours and poor socio-economic conditions leads to prevalence of infections, digestive disorders and nutritional deficiencies. Health Problems and Disease Patterns Let us now review health hazards of the workers with their causative sources in this work and manifestations. Poor safety and protective measures may lead to acute emergencies. Exposure to noxious gases, dust and suspended particulate matter lead to respiratory diseases. Strenuous working conditions lead to musculoskeletal disorders. Poor immune status due to undernourishment and virtually absent healthcare support leads to vulnerability to a number of diseases. Respiratory conditions Carbon monoxide poisoning Persons may experience headache or dizziness, but the main risk is that they may become unconscious or even die before any intervention. Children, sleeping persons or inebriated persons are especially at risk. Causative Source Carbon monoxide buildup in tunnel kilns, closed firing of bricks, poor ventilation or procedure for clearing gases. Occupational Asthma Bronchitis Chronic Cough Pharyngitis Causative Source Emission from brick kilns comprises of fine dust particles, hydrocarbons, sulfur dioxide, oxides of nitrogen, fluoride compounds, carbon monoxide and small amount of carcinogenic dioxins. Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Diseases and pulmonary tuberculosis. Causative source 
working and living in cramped spaces, undernourishment and chronic exposure and inhalation of suspended particulate matter and dust increases vulnerability to infection and interstitial lung disease. Lung Cancer Causative Source Large amount of dust and smoke with particulate matter are known predisposing factors. Musculoskeletal conditions and physical injuries. Pain Acute back pain, knee pain. Work-related MSD includes inflammatory and degenerative processes that may involve the muscles, tendons, cartilages and joints causing pain and functional impairment. Causative Source Lifting of heavy loads, unorthodox postures opted by these workers where the joints and muscles are held in unhealthy positions for protracted periods of time in suboptimal working conditions. Burns, Falls, Accidental Injuries Children are especially vulnerable. Causative Source Uncontrolled fire, hot surfaces, poor working conditions. Ear, nose and throat conditions. Recurrent or persistent ear infections like otitis externa or otitis media and hearing loss. Children are especially affected. Causative Source Exposure to contaminated water and mud. Gastrointestinal conditions Acid peptic disease, nausea, vomiting and even diarrhea observed. Causative source Polyaromatic hydrocarbon that is found in smoke emitted from factories of brick making may be responsible. Clinical Parasitic infestation Children are especially affected. Causative source Exposure to contaminated water and mud causes many serious illnesses such as severe worm infestations. Cardiovascular conditions Ischemic heart disease Men and women may be equally affected. Causative source Several parameters such as resting heart rate, pre-working, working and recovery heart rate were significantly altered especially in working women. Exposure to heat and heavy work affect the cardiac strain of both male and female workers. Additionally, addiction to smoking predominantly by males and chewing tobacco in both men and women predisposed to the rise in cardiac strain. Renal and genitourinary conditions Urinary tract infection and infestation This condition is significantly higher in women. Causative source Poor and unsafe toilet facilities for women coupled with working long hours in intense heat with little downtime and scarce drinking water. Chronic kidney disease Hydronephrosis or pyelonephritis Causative source Calculi, that is urinary stones, or chronic or repeated urinary infection may be the redisposing cause. Profuse sweating leading to daily severe dehydration can also be possible causes. Dermatological conditions Contact Dermatitis Skin Infections Causative Source Exposure to contaminated water and mud Nutritional Conditions Multiple Nutritional Deficiencies Vitamin A, B and D Deficiencies Weakness, Giddiness, Muscular Pain Weakness Causative Source Poor socio-economic conditions. Goiter Hypothyroidism Causative source Iodine deficiency
Preventive interventions require strategic contribution and efforts from government through occupational health and safety policy and legislation, cooperation from employers as well as workers and advice from medical professionals. Occupational diseases manifest after long latency period from the time of exposure. There are challenges to establish and declare that a disease is due to hazard at workplace. Elaborate guidelines for management and prevention of occupationally caused diseases is beyond the scope of this documentary as currently there is no mechanism for doctors to enforce their recommendation without a statutory backing. We therefore give general principles of prevention. Preventive measures should be designed and implemented at three levels of prevention. One. Primary prevention aims to reduce the occurrence of disease by eliminating the cause of disease, for example, use of benzene-free solvents or solvent-free paints to eliminate the risk of carcinogenicity or reducing exposure to safe levels that prevent it from causing damage, for example, reducing noise at its source to levels that do not cause noise-induced deafness. Two. Secondary prevention to identify and treat health problems as early as possible, often before symptoms have developed, in order to take corrective action. For example, regular audiograms among workers exposed to high levels of noise in the work environment. 3. Tertiary prevention aims to avoid complications of and disability from illnesses and injuries and or to provide rehabilitative and palliative care. It aims to minimize the consequences in persons who already have disease and depends on appropriate treatment. We expect that the primary care physicians are already well versed with clinical knowledge for management of the occupationally caused health conditions. To learn more about detailed clinical perspective, treatment and prevention and control, Please refer to ebook or printed version of BOHS for informal industry, manual for primary care providers. So, if your next patient with any of the presenting symptoms we described earlier comes for treatment, please don't forget to ask him the million dollar question. What exactly is the nature of your work?